economist or a politician, but I have long been of the opinion that the problems we face as a species are not helped by the fact that there are nearly 7 billion of us, which as far as I am concerned is too many. This is not a popular view to hold, especially given the inevitable retort. Well, what do you propose to do about it? Genocide? Compulsory birth control? Euthanasia? Abortion? Not a bit of it. I don't for a second advocate any forceful reduction of the population. But I think it is in humanity's interest to address this problem seriously and soon. When I hear someone on the radio stating that they have ten children, and then the presenter says, well done, I shout at the radio, how can people believe that very large families in the 21st century are a good thing? Incidentally, something I've noticed is that almost without exception, those with a lot of children are religious. Now I'm aware that this is a complex and thorny issue. There is the fact that the population growth in poor countries is generally higher than in so-called developed countries like Britain and America, but with a very few exceptions the populations of all countries in the world are growing. Another factor is that the distribution of wealth and resources in the world is incredibly unfair. It's sheer dumb luck that I have several taps, or faucets for my American friends, which provide a reliable supply of clean drinking water. More than a billion of my fellow humans are not so lucky, and that is shameful. Population distribution is another factor which is used as a counter-argument to mine. There are vast areas with very few people. Countries like Australia, Canada and New Zealand could comfortably support many more people. But my argument is that the overall global population is unhealthily high for a planet the size of the Earth and given the fact that we are dependent on the earth, it would be better to have more areas underpopulated and fewer overpopulated. Take Britain as an example. If it weren't for the fact that we can and do import coal, food, timber and countless other things, we would struggle to maintain a population of 62 million. We import fine beans, coffee and cocoa beans from African countries which struggle to feed their own populations. As I said before, this is a complex issue and politics also plays a large part. Another counter-argument is that advances in technology will overcome all of these obstacles. New and more efficient farming methods and improvements in the distribution of food will be able to feed more people. This is the sort of argument politicians and business leaders like to use. These are the people who seem least able and willing to acknowledge the idea that indefinite growth within the confines of a finite world might not be such a great thing. Financial success is revered and politicians on all sides agree that if the economy is not growing we are in trouble. To a certain degree I agree with that conclusion. But I'm also aware of the concepts of sustainability and thinking beyond the next few decades. It seems to me that a lot of people, especially those with children, have such frenetic and busy lives that they don't have time to ponder upon so many of the more profound questions in life and examine our place in history and in the universe. I don't have children and I don't intend to bring any new humans into the world, but I do have nephews and nieces and I care passionately about the future and the well-being of life, the earth and the people who haven't even been born yet. I don't claim to have the solutions, but I have a number of ideas which could be beneficial if they became common knowledge, and they could be beneficial if they germinated among those who make decisions which affect our lives and society.